Hey everybody, it's RGBs here, and we're talking about today a little tutorial, um, something that someone had asked me uh, a little bit about how to do, and I'm going to go ahead and answer that as best as I can. One of the things that I build on the servers pretty regularly and pretty early, as soon as I get iron really, is a quick um, super smelter. Uh, and what that is, is it's an arrangement of furnaces, hoppers, which are leading obviously into the objects in question, right? And I just usually line these up in the back, put chest here, regular chests, mind you, double chests. And here, now what this does, just grab a quick example here, oh, go to materials, coal, is this evenly distributes coal across both furnaces and items that you would want to smelt across, again, both furnaces. Um, and this is a really cool feature, and I figured this one out on my own, but I have seen other people use it. And it's a really awesome, awesome, awesome way to build a smelter. However, there is a bigger, cooler, and more advanced way to do it with redstone, and we're going to talk a little bit about that here today. So, uh, what we're going to do to get started is we're going to go ahead and expand um, our overall smelting. Now here, this is nice and compact and cheap to build because there's no redstone interfering with any of these hoppers. As we know, a redstone signal will lock a hopper and not allow it to process. So we're going to have to double, even triple, uh, the amount of hoppers involved, but the payoff is huge on this particular build. So let's uh, build a quick prototype. Let's make a quick output chest over here, right like that. Right. I'm going to put that one in there, and we're going to add one, two, three, four. We're going to just do four of these right now, because I think that that's the simplest way to do it. You can expand it easily up to eight. With a little ingenuity, you can expand it even farther, but I find eight is pretty good. But four, I think, will be a perfectly adequate example. We're going to go ahead and put our uh, furnaces on top. These will obviously bake our materials. These will pull the baked materials out, lock them in the bottom there, right? Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add hoppers pointing into these furnaces on the back. And we're going to actually add two different rows, just like that. Uh, the reason for that is, again, redstone. Um, we don't want it to interfere. Now across here, we're going to add a hopper here pointing down, here pointing down, here pointing down. Uh, and same thing along the second row, one, two, three, four. Now for these last sets, we're going to put one pointing down on both ends, right? And then behind them, we're going to have them pointing into these down-facing hoppers. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Wonderful. Now what these do is these will, um, left to its own devices, all the items would pour into this hopper and into this furnace until it was all full, and then it would fill up in the next one. Well, we want to stop that, so we're going to need to lock these hoppers. How we're going to do that is with a little bit of redstone trickery which is always awesome, in my book, at least. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to place blocks in these configurations, and this is, this is what I would call the minimum configuration. Uh, and we're going to put a comparator. Remember, comparators detect uh, if there's anything in the item or the uh, container block here. I'm just going to put that in there, leave it set like so. We're going to send this uh, signal through this torch here. This is actually a knot, so it's going to be powered when there is nothing in here, which is exactly what we need. And we're going to go ahead and add a repeater facing this way, no ticks, and redstone dust facing this way. So what this is going to do is actually set it up so that um, we have uh, a delay that will keep every, all these hoppers locked beneath them, right? The ones above are not locked. The power, the signal is running through this redstone to this block and to this hopper. And it's locking these bottom hoppers so that as long as this is on, nothing will go down until it hits here. When it hits here, it's going to detect that there's one item of coal in there. It's going to turn this off and everything in here, a line of coal is going to drop a chunk down to here, down to here, and into here. You can actually watch that right here, right? One, two, three, and four. And this is going to evenly distribute everything. And the th what we're going to do next is we're going to repeat the exact same thing along the top here. Same thing, right? We're going to lock these hoppers 
just like that. We're going to add in two blocks here. We're going to put a temporary block here and a block here. Remove this block. Add in a comparator. Invert our signal. And add a repeater and add our redstone. So that's great, right? This is going to automatically smelt everything for us. Now this is 15, 15, 15, 15. Look at that, isn't that cool? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of ore just to test this out. A little bit of gold, we love gold. I'm gonna drop it in the input up here and as you'll see these should all flick on, boom! All in one right away. And the more of these, um, the more of these that you have all hooked up together, the faster you'll be able to smelt the stack. You can smelt a lot with just eight. Um, you can go as high as sixteen, but you do need to put a break because a redstone signal will not travel any more than uh, fifteen units. So if I were to put a redstone here, a redstone torch here, and just run this out, right? Boom, shuts down. Right. So this is this is the absolute max that you could do in one line with a little bit of a little bit of work and spacing them out with a repeater uh, you can get as many as you want. Now we're going to talk about one more feature of this um, particular smelter that you can use and that is the idea of locking these hoppers right so we can put these here like so and now these hoppers are locked right so they've been emptying everything into the chest now uh, they are actually going to get stuck in the furnace um, and the reason that we want this is for XP reasons. Uh, you can smelt things and get XP as long as you pull them out of the furnace and not just dumping them out through a hopper, right? The price of automation is quality, so if we want experience, we need to feed them out through the hopper. Now, in order to make this toggleable, we need to do just a little bit of um, a little bit of witchery, if you will. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to dig under here and we're going to dig out two rows. To make this nice and simple. Now I usually put my switch over on the other side here. You can put it anywhere you want and it's just fine. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and place mine right here. All right? This will be my switch. And I'm gonna put in a light up here to indicate whether or not this is powered or not. All right? And then I'm gonna stick my redstone dust down uh, this way. And I'm gonna put in repeaters behind each and every one of those redstone torches. So that's four of them. Run my redstone dust, like so. And now, whenever I want, I can just turn this machine on, and all of my items will go flooding out. Or if I want to harvest the XP, I can just flip the system back on. Now when you're ready, it's pretty easy just to decorate this thing. You can put these blocks uh, anywhere you want. You can put stairs in front of here. The only thing that you should never ever do is fill this area or put any blocks too near your redstone or wrap things around. Generally you want to keep it nice and clean and obviously light the area with torches. Now when it comes to setting up the inputs for this system, um, the best thing that I can tell you is remember your, your smelting input goes on the top, usually with a chest. Um, I find it's good to put a um, trap chest on top and then your input for your coal is back here and you can put that anywhere that you want. Now using the same configuration, if you want to get one more layer of clever, um, you can put your uh, a coal feed into this. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll have a chest here, you know, that's for just, you know, just straight coal input, right? Anything blaze rods, coal, blocks of coal, charcoal. Whatever. Well, you might want to put something else, right? So sometimes you, you run out of charcoal and you need to make charcoal, but you don't want to go through the process of running through the smelter, putting it around and all that. You can actually automate that process right like so. So we'll just put this in here like this. Add in a little hopper here, a hopper here, a hopper here. Go up with our chest, right? And what this does is this uses that same even distribution principle. And you can take an entire block of, let's say, I don't know, spruce wood, and drop it right in here. And that'll evenly distribute it, use some for, some for fuel, some for smelting down, and it'll automatically start dumping them into your fuel chest. Look at that. Now generally speaking, it doesn't matter uh, if you mix the fuel types, uh, what's going to end up happening is um, as the fuel gets used, new stuff will get uh, put in there. 
If you overfill the system, I could see a few backups, but usually that's not an issue. You'll have to remember to fill this every now and again. But that is how you build an industrial furnace, um, even uh, basing it around the idea of this little super smelter, uh, which is extremely handy. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe. Get your friends to subscribe uh, because tutorial videos are fun and everything, but they're for other people, not so much me. This one was uh, at the request of one of my server buddies, uh, and I'm happy to do it, but you know, I only do them on request. So if you want to know how I built something uh, or how something works, please leave a request for a tutorial. Otherwise, we will talk to you all later. Bye!